Welcome to Barometer World, I'm Philip Collins and here you can see our 17th century design glass bottle kiln. As you can see it's a bottle shape and inside it there is this crucible which will be mounded up with glass, broken bits of glass, cull it and then when we fire it that will gradually melt down and over about 24 hours, 36 hours we'll have some nice fine glass which we can offhand work tomorrow sometime in the morning. Now you can see that there's a firebox here on the ground, there's one the other side and we'll fire that with planks of wood off cuts and the heat will be generated around the kiln and it will circulate. There's a baffle in the top of the kiln inside so that will slow the heat from coming out and we will get probably 1100 to 1200 degrees centigrade in there which is just about the right temperature for lead glass. Welcome back to the evening firing of the glass kiln at Robert World. As you can see, it's getting pretty dark now. The fire's well lit. We've got up to a temperature of about 720 degrees centigrade, and that's several hours of burning to get that temperature. A few hours we get up to over a thousand, we hope. We'll be stoking all night, and tomorrow morning, it's about 10 o'clock, hopefully, we'll be pulling some glass out and doing things with hot glass. Good morning, welcome back to Barometer World and here you see our glass kiln. We've been firing all night in shifts, I've not been up all night but it's 2 o'clock yesterday morning and we've been firing at both fireboxes. We've got a temperature of about 1100 degrees, not been easy, it's not been very windy but we've coaxed it along and here we are with the fireboxes blazing away as you can see in the background here. It's ever so hot here, very tired work so shortly we'll open up the glory hole to see what the glass is like. Now it's a bit of a tense moment. And this is the final wall uh, to the inside of the kiln. It's almost unbearable already. Well, welcome back to the kiln. Here you can see that the glass now is ready to work. We've opened up the glory hole and we can see there's a nice lot of really hot workable glass in there lead glass and we're just warming up the punches now and the blowing irons so that we can work and pick out some glass so see how we get on with that of course we've still got to keep stoking so the wood's still going to go in there so here we go with the first lot of glass so we've got some irons in the fire as they say and there's some glass filling up the end of the hole in there so we've got to blow those through first so once they've got really hot on the end we can blow through and clear the iron out ready for gathering Out. Right, a bubble. That's what I want.
So I'm ready for when you want more water thing. Thin, thin, too thin. How extra. Welcome back. End of the day. We've tidied up the kiln. We've been taking hot glass out for several hours now. It's exhausting work. Now the principle of this kiln was to discover how they used to make barometer tubing in the 17th century. And we've learnt quite a lot. It's difficult to make, that's true, highly skilled. But when you make a gather of glass with a bubble in it and get a punty attached to the end and pull it apart, rest it on bits of wood, you make long tubing. You can make tubing, and we've made quite a bit of this at this kiln, truthfully not today. This is about 10, 12 millimetre diameter. We've got a reasonable bore in it of about six, seven, eight millimetres, and it varies a little bit. But as you can see, this is a fine piece of tubing and would make nice barometer. In the 17th century, they had to get this glass and it was made in a kiln like this. This would be lamp worked to be sealed over and if you look at any old barometer of the 17th and even the 18th century, they generally tend to be of this diameter because it forms naturally when you're pulling it out. The Victorian barometer makers, however, made very large heavy glass like this one. This is, takes a lot more gathering. This is about three quarters of an inch, nearly an inch diameter. Highly skilled, a lot of weight on the end of the punty irons and that is quite an achievement to make. But you can also make thermometer tubing in the same process. And here's a little piece of thin glass capillary which would be suitable for making 18th century thermometer tubes or even 17th century tubes. Filled with alcohol or mercury to make a thermometer. We pulled out about 90 feet of this across the lawn from one gathering of glass. Once you start pulling out it cools down and then you pull from the reservoir of hot glass. And we've learned quite a lot here on this glass kiln. It's hard work but it gives us another insight into how barometer tubes were made.